We went to visit Lakeland College's Center for Sustainable Innovation, and we had to learn about ways to regulate the greenhouse. Some of the ways that they showed us we would have never thought of if, they, if we didn't go to the CSI Center. The great thing about the Lakeland field trip for us as a staff was that we got to see the facilities like their greenhouse up close and it gave us an idea about what our end goal would look like. It gave us an end target to shoot for. The Lakeland College trip gave the kids a taste of what was possible, what they could accomplish. They didn't realize it at the time, but even after the initial design conference, they would come up with ideas for our greenhouse based on what they saw at Lakeland. Uh, I think the design conference helped because it gave us a rough idea of what we were working with and uh, it was a big help to have Mr. T and Mr. Bear in there to help us and uh, show us what we can and probably could not do. And it was also good to work with the other grades because they gave us a rough idea of what they wanted to do so we had an idea of what we could do. The design conference was an excellent opportunity for the students to consult with the knowledgeable experts to refine concepts and construct plans. The time allowed for communication and collaboration within their own team and with the other teams. The conference culminated into a presentation done by each grade and was inspirational to the students and staff. There we go, both pipes. White ones. So can you tell us a little bit about the role the grade seven class is playing in the sustainable greenhouse project? The grade sevens are participating in redesigning the greenhouse so that it requires less energy to heat it in the fall and to keep it cooler in the summertime so that our plants that we eventually grow in there can be happy and healthy for a longer, a longer season. On February 14th, we applied the foil bubble wrap to the north wall and half of the east and west walls. We did not notice a significant impact on the temperature staying higher overnight. We added the silver bubble wrap because those walls don't get much sunlight. So for the sunlight that the greenhouse does collect, on those sides, it reflects off the bubble wrap and onto the greenhouse. On February 21st, we took down the polyplastic from the south wall and applied new polycarbonate on the south wall. The next day, we noticed that the temperature increased significantly up to 46 degrees Celsius. The heat was staying in the greenhouse for longer because the changes that we made made a huge difference. In the early stages of their project, the grade sevens focused exclusively on making changes to the greenhouse to increase the temperature inside. However, after making several modifications, we started noticing very hot temperatures during the day, sometimes in excess of 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. Despite this, at night we were sometimes still dipping below zero. We needed to find ways to absorb the heat during the day so that it could be released during the night to stabilize the temperatures. The students researched and found several possible solutions, including using water barrels, a compost bin, and creating vents that open whenever the temperature inside exceeds 30 degrees Celsius. The grade sevens learned to do by doing. They learned how to use a drill, uh, how to secure the plastic sheet layer inside the greenhouse without ripping the plastic. Uh, they saw thermal uh, 
um, layers develop in the rain barrels and recognized that this was not absorbing the maximum heat possible. So they brainstormed together as a class ways to solve that problem and decided they needed a way to mix up the layers uh, in the water. They decided to use an air pump uh, to cause water from lower layers to be forced up to the top of the barrel, thus transferring that heat throughout. And it was an amazing, like, wow, uh, conclusion to draw and solution for them to come up with on their own. The grade eight students have been working on the greenhouse project throughout the school year. We have been doing this with our science teacher, Miss Morrison and Mr. Tim Fichek in the greenhouse here at the school. We have been creating a self irrigation system for the greenhouse. First, we collect rainwater and snow and it goes through a series of pipes to our first flush system where it cleans the water from all the debris and dirt in it and then it goes through some more pipes into the greenhouse where it self waters all the plants. So the water comes in from the roof and it goes into this tube here. The dirty water pushes the ball up, the ball blocks the tube and then it goes through this one and into a tank. My favorite part of the greenhouse project was being an active learner rather than sitting in the classroom in a desk. Building and putting up the first flush system was my favorite part to build because we had to cut some plastic PVC pipe and build the first flush system that includes a circular filter at the bottom that will filter any leaves that get into the water and then there is a green plastic ball inside of it that will rise up to the spout that leads into the storage tank. Then the dirty water drips out of the bottom and the clean water coming off the roof will go into the storage tank and be ready to use for the plants. This project has allowed students from all different academic backgrounds and building backgrounds to come together to complete something that is tangible. It has allowed students to learn skills above grade level. So for example, some of the students were using trigonometry, which is a grade 10 math skill, to calculate the, the distance from the ground to uh, where the eaves trough had, sorry, up to the eaves trough, so we could calculate the length of pipe that we needed for the first flush system. I was very impressed with the grade eight class throughout the project. They consistently demonstrated teamwork and collaboration throughout even when faced with adversity. There were times when they even lent a helping hand with some of the other grades' projects. They were also very effective problem solvers, and they found sound solutions to the various problems that they faced through the process of designing and building their irrigation system. This year, the grade 9 class was given the opportunity to build our own hydroponic tower garden after the school was granted a large sum of money for the BP project, as we call it. Naturally, a new project starting from scratch, with our class especially, was bound to bring not only success but many challenges to overcome. A long time ago, but not too far away, we maintained a tower garden trademark tower garden. That was when our love for lettuce started. The students for the grade nine project have overcome, like a, have completed a really, really large topic. So they have come together over the entire school year to complete this hydroponic uh, tower. They've had to work collaboratively and learn how to accept other students' ideas, problem solving methods and personalities to reach a consensus. The grade nines have successfully constructed a vertical tower garden with six times the capacity of commercially sold tower gardens. We are currently growing approximately 160 plants, the majority of which are lettuce. I really enjoyed this project. I was, it was fun. It was a fun experience. I really liked the building part and when we finished because I, I like seeing our success. It was a good feeling knowing that it works and that we built it. And this will 
be a good thing for my future to get a job that can be related to this project, like designing and science and engineering. Overall, it was a good experience, and I can easily say I learned a lot. I can now balance chemicals, strip, strip wires, make a continuous circuit, make a circuit open and close, set up heat and moisture sensors, and work effectively in a group of people. Thinking about what we have accomplished in these past six months is amazing, and every good project will come with challenges that we will have to face and mountains that we will have to climb and overcome. One of the best parts of this project for me was seeing the different offshoots that came from it. Students really took control of the project and took control of their learning, and they went in some directions that we really hadn't anticipated. A great example of this was the group of grade 9 students that took an interest in coding. Through trial and error, they learned how to build and program a temperature and humidity sensor that we used in the greenhouse to collect data. Through their creation, we can get a live feed of the temperature and humidity inside, and it refreshes every five seconds. This data was invaluable to the grade seven class as they made modifications to the greenhouse in an effort to regulate the temperature and lengthen the growing season. These students even inspired me to learn more about this in my spare time. It was great to see other students throughout the school becoming inspired through this project as well. Some afternoons I'd make my way into the shop and find a grade 7 class testing a concept that they learned in science. At the same time you might see grade 9s constructing their tower garden, while some senior high students would be building a planter bench or building raised garden beds. This project helped us as a staff to really engage our students in their learning and it enabled us to provide meaningful, hands-on lessons that led to rich, deep learning for our students. <laughs>